Shane Cashman, and welcome to Volume 2 of Tales from the Inverted World, Ghosts of the Civil War, now a TimCast.com exclusive. The following story you are about to hear is true. A Wave of Evil, Part 2. On the surface, Elberton looks like any other small town, but as you look closer, you begin to see the differences. Granite signs, granite monuments, granite churches, granite banks, and even a granite auditorium. Yes, Elberton might look like any other small town, but here there is the largest deposit of granite in the world. It accounts for one half of all monumental granite produced annually in the United States. There are more than 40 quarries in operation and 100 companies with granite-related products. 90% of the granite is for cemetery memorials. Hundreds of thousands of cemetery monuments, tombstones, and markers are manufactured here. These granite deposits were created more than 500 million years ago when molten mass pushed its way upwards creating the root zone of the Appalachian mountain chain. It is 35 miles long and 6 miles wide of solid rock. Of course, the earth doesn't give up easily what it's taken years to make. The Santa-looking man at the Granite Museum makes you sit and watch this presentation on a small TV. He said no one usually sits for the whole thing, but Clint and I sat there on the bench with our necks craned up trying to understand the Georgia Guidestones, the granite megaliths right here in Elberton, about a 30-minute drive outside Washington. The museum, however, had nothing to do with the Guidestones and everything to do with the granite deposits from which the Guidestones were cut and the art of turning granite into banks and tombstones. As far as the guidestones go, supposedly a man using the pseudonym R.C. Christian appeared in Elberton and asked Mr. Joe Fenley to create and erect the monument. No one knows who Christian was, nor what his true intentions were, if there were ulterior motives underlying the very specific language that would accompany the guidestones. If you ask the man at the museum questions, he'll just point to the TV. All the answers I needed were on the screen, he said. The TV screen showed us how the granite was blasted and brought up from the land. Giant diamond rotary saws cut through the rock, sparks fly, and water is used as a coolant, making cemetery Jesuses and flying eagles and portraits of the dead 